Hello everyone, welcome back to the kitchen table. Welcome back to this kitchen table. It's been a while because uh, while I've been away and busy on other things, you've been in the delightful company of Barry. Hello, Barry. Hello, Simon. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you too, sir. So Barry and I just thought we'd have a little bit of a chat now that the dust has settled on CES about what we learned that was new and shiny and exciting in the drone world. But before we do that, it is of course the kitchen table. We must always have a beverage when we discuss drones. Now it is very much during the day uh, and so I am on coffee. I have some uh, Colombian um, Arabica coffee, um, uh, being drunk as an Americano. Um, so cheers from my end. Over to you, Barry. And whilst you're having a slurp, uh, obviously in my much treasured on the kitchen table mug, I have a uh, traditional Cadbury's hot chocolate. Very nice. Thank you. Not quite as British as it would have been cocoa, but we'll let you off. Um, <clears throat> Thank you very much. You're welcome. So, yes, Barry and I were having a chat. We thought, well, we might as well actually just record the chat because the first thing I think I wanted to, to say about what we'd seen at CES in terms of drone news was, well, where was the drone news? Um, uh, not really an awful lot to report, certainly not in terms of uh, new innovations and new hardware developments. I don't know, Barry, did, did I miss anything? Have I, did I miss uh, DJI sneaking out a brand new product or anything like that? Well, if you did, um, you must have been asleep on the same day that I was because I didn't see anything. And in fact, I do like to go to these shows. Certainly my experience at the UK Drone Show is, is great to see people and network. And I probably would have gone to CES. But if I had have gone and spent probably £1,000 going just to network and look at people and and say, what have you got new? I would have been bitterly disappointed with the extreme lack of dronage there. I wonder if that's as well due to the timing of it. I know CES in the sort of home electronic, consumer electronics, which is of course why it's called CES, marketplace, um, they build through to a, a kind of a launch a product in the early part of the year, get the stocks in the shops in summer, and then the push through to Christmas. I wonder if, because last year there was a bit of a flurry of, of new stuff coming out, that there just wasn't anything to, to show, because the, the drone market, again, seems to be, uh, last year anyway, there was a bit more sort of competition to get things out. Uh, but I don't know. I, I Personally, I wonder if we've reached in the consumer market anyway, in the ready-to-fly stuff that you and I tend to enjoy. I wonder if we've just reached the kind of the a bit of a ceiling in terms of where can the actual hardware technology go. I mean, we've got, uh, you know, hexacopter consumer drones now. Uh, we've got uh, everything comes with very high quality GPS and GLONASS. Everything comes with downward looking optical flow and sensors for indoor flight. Everything's pretty much now got some sort of detection sensor to determine if you're going to hit a person or a building. Where is there left to go? What do you think, Barry? Have we hit now at the consumer level? Are we just now going to be seeing tweaks and, and, and iterations? Have we hit the, the maximum of where we can go and keep it sensibly priced? Well, this is, this is the worrying thing, isn't it? Because what, what can you do? You know, they've, they've invented this fantastic technology. They've improved the camera. They've improved the positioning, the safety of it. Uh, what, what else now can they do? I mean, it, it seems to me that we've got massive leaps and bounds with the the phantom 4 pro and and that's now giving an image better than what the inspire one was with the very normal camera and in fact there are comparisons online that the inspire 2 with its stock camera is slightly worse quality than the phantom 4 pro now obviously you know the phantom 4 pro is still a 1500 or 1800 pound machine um, whichever option you go for whether you have the screen on or or no screen where you supply your own tablet but the Inspire 2 is several thousand pounds. Well, if you're getting the same stock image from it, it seems to me that what what else can they now do? It's it. I think you might be right. We might have hit the ceiling, and now what happens to get through that? Yeah, I I, I think we're going to be seeing tweaks. And I did notice I did notice a couple of sort of new things from the non-mainstream manufacturer, which we'll talk about later. Um, but I think we're now at the stage where, as you say, it's, it's tweaks to the camera, it's tweaks to the software, perhaps that's going to be the next move. Uh, but interestingly, there was maybe a, a sneaky something on the horizon um, because DJI did make a sort of announcement about something coming up, uh, a little collaboration with another technology company. They did. Um, 
DJI announced at uh, CES that they were partnering with Seagate Technology. Obviously, Seagate, we all know, make hard drives. Um, and at the beginning of CES, they said they're now working jointly to solve the data demands of UAV users. Now, to me, that interprets as Inspire 2 users because whilst the, the Phantom 4 Pro is a good beast, it's not that much of a jump up that you're going to have to worry about your, your data handling mm. when you're capturing images. But um, with the, the Inspire 2 now going to 5.2K, um, you are looking at a 25-minute flight which will produce around 120 gigabytes of data. So let's let's look at that again. So when you're flying in 5.2K for a 25-minute flight, you can expect on your Inspire 2 120 gigabytes of data. Absolutely phenomenal. What's that? 30 DVDs worth of data from one 25-minute flight. Now, chances are you'll still end up using... 30 seconds of that but that is a phenomenal amount of data so the seagate technology thing whilst they haven't actually announced the product i can only see it being some sort of partnership where they either have a super duper ssd i know you can get your 512 gig ssds which cost a lot of money from dji whether seagate are going to come out with some super duper ssd that will slit in or or or, or who knows maybe some sort of cloud um, distribution for your data who knows but it's certainly exciting times um, because you've got so much data to, to play with but again I suspect exciting if you're in uh, if you're a pro or a high-end prosumer mm. um, that again that's where I think that's where I think this is where the market may be may be starting to turn its its development uh, bucks into the commercial End. Now, with the DJI, obviously, you've spoken about 5.2K video for commercial aerial photography. But I also noticed that Unique actually, I think it's slightly cheating to say that Unique launched a new product at CES. Because I think what they really launched was a kind of a tweaked up Typhoon H, the H520. So what, what they've basically said is, look, you can buy the H off the shelf, but if you're a commercial user, particularly if you want to have something that's ruggedized and you want to be a high-end, you know, uh, law enforcement or uh, inspection, uh, that sort of public sectory kind of stuff, then you need something that's been, you know, adapted for that. So they're calling them commercial grade cameras for high-end commercial use and they've also saying that you know they've basically ruggedized it um a bit and it's been painted orange which of course as we know certainly in the uk if you ever see anything painted orange that immediately means that it has full authority over uh, everything that it surveys um it comes with three camera options the, the thermal uh camera which i believe you know you've had a play with um barry the the seago 3 plus which is the standard daylight 4k camera that it that the h comes with <clears throat> and also this new seago ci which they're calling a seven element inspection ready camera now i'm not a pro photographer but i happen to know one not a million miles away from this particular table um and barry correct me if i'm wrong but the idea of this one is that it has a longer focal length meaning you can get quality close uh, you know the, the equivalent sort of image close up but without having to fly the drone quite so close to the high voltage power line or the chimney stack that you're wanting to look at have i got that right absolutely correct i mean it, it, it basically means that when you have a cell tower for example there are very mixed reports when you fly near a cell tower with a uav as to whether it interferes and what frequencies it goes on and you know all this and all that in reality now with this 55 millimeter fixed lens on the new camera from unique you don't have to get as close however you can hear the disappointment in my voice because there is no different resolution i would have thought in the game of competition between dji versus unique which exists and is there and splits users one way or the other I would have thought Unique would have got out a higher resolution camera on par, or if not better, with the Phantom 4 Pro. Interestingly, one thing that wasn't there, but some news, and I know you were following this one particularly closely, Barry, was um, GoPro Karma. Cards on the table. I love GoPro. 
I love the fact that the guy that invented it, it really was a startup and just took over the world. And so when the Karma was announced, I'm always one of these cautious people. I won't go out and buy a UAV until it's been tried, tested, and the faults found simply because, you know, I don't believe in investing money badly in a new platform. So when the Karma was announced, I thought, this is going to be brilliant. Um, and as we all know, 16 days after the launch, it wasn't brilliant at all. In fact, it ended up with GoPro asking for all the Karmas back uh, in uh, compensation for you losing your Karma and losing your £1,000 for just under two weeks. They would give you a £400 camera. Um, there is exciting news about this, um, but put an asterisk by the exciting and see how it goes. But supposedly the Karma is coming back. Has the Karma gone back to GoPro? Um, there is a relaunch due in February 2017 mm. um, to try and resolve these power problems with the, the drone battery coming loose or flying out. And unfortunately, as we've all seen, horrific results to a £1,000 UAV. Uh, yeah, it, I think it's good for competition. The bottom line is, the more the more successful drones on the market, the the more they'll be on their toes to either drop the prices or innovate, and that is what we need. It, if we only end up with unique and DJI, then you know that's going to slow the innovation. So, like you, just from that point of view, I hope I hope it moves on. Um, one little, it's an interesting product I saw, and I've never seen this before in a drone. And again, this might go back to. The discussion we had earlier about is the hardware the physical hardware about at the level it can get now because i saw a, there was a new product launch it was called the x dynamics evolve and as you can see from the photographs it's a sexy beast it's all carbon fiber monocoque construction and it looks the business um but as i was reading the blurb on it i realized that they actually spent virtually no time telling you about the aircraft it was all about how they've got a funky transmitter and what they've done is they've made a transmitter with two screens built in. One is a touchpad for doing the control, and one is the actual monitor screen, which has a big seven inch view of what you're actually filming um, on the top, um, which I think is a nifty idea. I do like that actually, um, but, but they spent the entire time telling everybody that you should buy their drone because it's the actual transmitter, the controller that they're, that they're, that they're plugging. Um, and that just tickled me that now we're, we're at the point where, you know, the specs of the drone really aren't important because everyone expects it to have a 4K camera and to do this and to do that and GPS. Uh, so that was just a that was just an interesting one. Um, maybe that's where we're going to go now. Maybe it's about the accessories and about the software and about how easy it is to get your imaging off. Maybe that's, as you said, the Seagate thing. Other than that, really, year of the selfie drone, I'd say, unfortunately. You know my th feelings on selfie drones, Barry. I know you've played around with the Breeze. There were, there were a few more. We had the, the hover camera passport, which is quite an interesting concept, and the Romy cylindrical weirdness. I mean, selfie drones, uh, f surely, Barry, just a passing fancy. The fact that it's got the word selfie in it, says it's not really a drone that we would use it's not a uav you would use for commercial work it's a bit of fun i love the breeze i've been very vocal in that and i think you have to take it for exactly what it is um it's not a mavic you know the breeze itself from unique is not a mavic it's it's not intended to be it's intended to be exactly what it says on the box it is a selfie camera and i think they're great however like you say you don't really see many people with selfie sticks these days I think they're brilliant fun. Take it on holiday, but that's where that that product finishes. Mm. I, I I wonder as well if part of the the drive for the smaller, more compact one is of course the 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 regulations in the states where if you're over a certain weight, you've got to register it and go through some hoops. Um, so again, the, the the smaller and lighter the aircraft, that's not going to trip over that uh, added complication, and that actually might drive. It might be that that could be a driver, rather than the fact that they think it's the selfie drone. I wonder if they're fine, you know, if they're if they're if they're promoting it as that. But actually, what what there is a move towards is trying to make drones smaller, lighter, uh, more compact. Not necessarily that you have to use them to take selfies, but if you want to be able to take a just a, a you know a, a shot of something from a height that you couldn't do on the ground, then you have something that's you know no bigger than a 
sandwich box or something in your rucksack and you can pop it up and do that then I, I guess maybe there is a there is a scope for that um, but yeah other than that really it's it was a bit thin on the ground for concrete new stuff um, I know that Unique have been talking about some new stuff this year Parrot at the UK drone show were giving heavy hints about some new stuff coming this year um, we'll have to see, but but overall, Barry, I thought I thought there was there was you know not much to not much to to, to make us feel like 2017 is going to be sort of uh, full of new wonders in the drone market. Anyway, on that note, um, thank you very much for your time. Um, uh, yeah, what were your thoughts? out there in YouTube land. What did you think about the, the CES and some of the things that we've discussed? Do you think we've kind of hit the, um, have we hit the ceiling of, of what's likely to, to, to be developed in the consumer drone? Are we just now going to be a series of small tweaks? Or do you think that there are still, you know, some leaps in the technology that are, that are available? Let us know in the comments. Um, thank you very much to everyone who subscribes to the channel. We will have more uh, from the kitchen table soon. We're also planning some interesting away days uh, Barry and I, where we're hoping to go and take you to some fairly interesting places that you wouldn't normally be able to get to that are either directly or indirectly related to drones and flying them and, and so on and so forth. More on that in the future. But until then, it's uh, goodbye from Barry. And it's goodbye from him. Cheers. <laughs>